Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Debola and I'm your host on Metalks with Debola. If it's your first time here, please don't forget to subscribe, watch and like my videos. So the last time I shared a story of a woman that sounded like all those Yoruba Abiku story. I hope you all remember. Okay, fine. If you've not watched the video or you probably can't remember, please do well to watch my last video before proceeding with this very video so we all can be on the same page, right? So guys, let's get it started. So guys, the last time we talked about resource factor, I think we stopped here. Yeah, we stopped here. Once sensitization occurs, any future babies with average positive will be at risk for hemolytic disease of newborn. So today we'll start by talking about what hemolytic disease of newborn is. Hemolytic disease of newborn occurs when your baby's red blood cells break down at a fast rate. Hemolysis simply means breakdown of red blood cells. It is also called erythroblastosis fetalis. Wow. Erythroblastosis fetalis. Such a big word. <laughs> Don't mind me. Not to worry. It's very simple. I would explain. Retroblastosis means production of immature red blood cells and fetalis refers to the fetus, right? Some of the problems that can result from hemolytic disease of newborn are 1. Severe anemia Severe anemia occurs when the mother's antibody attacks the baby's red blood cells. So they are broken down and destroyed. That's hemolysis taking place. So this makes the baby anemic. And being anemic means the baby does not have enough matured red blood cells. Anemia is dangerous. And this is because it limits the ability of the blood to carry oxygen to the baby's organs and tissues. One of the functions of your red blood cells is to carry oxygen to tissues and organs. So when a baby or anyone is anemic when they have they don't have enough mature red blood cells there will be problem so as a result the baby responds by trying to make red blood cells very quickly to make up for the lack of the mature red blood cells right so the new red blood cells are erythroblast and erythroblast are immature because they are immature, they cannot carry out the function of a mature red blood cells, which is to carry oxygen to vital organs. Another one is eye drops fetalis. Eye drops means abnormal accumulation of fluid in tissues. Eye drops fetalis occurs because the baby's organs are unable to handle the anemia. So the heart begins to fail. And large amounts of fluid build up in the baby's tissues and organs. A fetus with eye drops is at great risk of being stillborn. Next is severe hyperbilirubinemia and jaundice. As red blood cells are being broken down, a substance called bilirubin is formed. Usually, the liver handles the clearing of bilirubin but the baby's liver is unable to handle the large amount of bilirubin that results from the breakdown of red blood cells so this will lead to build up of bilirubin in the blood and other tissues bilirubin has a pigment and this causes yellowing of the baby's skin and eyes and this is what we refer to as jaundice the next one is kenicterus Kenicterus is the most severe form of hyperbilirubinemia and it results from the buildup of bilirubin in the brain. This can cause seizures, brain damage and deafness and it can even result to death. Right? I know all I've been saying sounds really scary. Very scary, I know. But not to worry. I have some really good news for you. Some really good news, I mean. So if as a woman, you are resource negative, 
you can actually have a child with a man who is resource positive without going through all those scary things I talked about. This is what the woman in my story should have done too. I mean the woman whose story sounded like those Yoruba people stories. So this is it. There is an injection which blocks the action of the antibodies and prevents the mother's blood from attacking the baby's blood. This injection is called Drogam and should be administered by healthcare providers to RH negative mothers within 72 hours after any of the following events. Number 1. Birth. 2. Abortion or miscarriage. 3. Some prenatal tests which are invasive. We already talked about those prenatal tests in the previous video. Some healthcare providers also recommend receiving the injection at about 28 weeks of pregnancy, right? Now to the prevention. Number one will be knowing your blood group and resource status for obvious reasons, right? Then genotype. I want to believe most of my viewers know their genotype, if not all. While this might not relate to a topic I just discussed, it is very important for other reasons. Please, regular and proper tenata care visits. Okay, let's assume you don't know your resource status before you got pregnant as a lady. If you actually registered and you were regular with your antenata care visits, you'll be required to do some tests. And knowing your resource status is actually one of them. So you see why antenatal care visits are very important. I will definitely talk about antenatal care visits later. So guys, that will be all on resource incompatibility as it relates to pregnancy. Thank you all for watching. I hope you've learned one or two things. If you have any question, clarification or recommendation, please feel free to use the comment section. I had loads of comments on my last post. And I was really glad. You can also reach out to me on my Twitter or Instagram handle at Miss Bonnie. I have the correct spelling on the screen. So till next time when I bring you another very interesting topic, let's stay safe. Bye.